kila o hualalai ike kai ma oki oki o kona ika lai o ala ula iuka ala o ke ala kehe ika aina ho opula pula o la io pua aloha mai kako o wau no o kumuke ala o kumuke ala ko u inoa no ke ala kehe hawaii mai au mamua no nana kuli o ahu mai au a uh, ua ne'e au i ia wahi ma Hawaii Island a uh, makahi o iwa kalua ku makahi mau makahiki i hala aku nei mai ka i au i ke ia po no ke ka ana ana a uh, e pili ana ka wai a uh, he kumu a uh, ola he kumu na mea like ole a um, maki i aina nei uh, greetings from the mountains of Hualalai to the beautiful oceans of Kona, until the oceans go all the way to Honokohau, out there by Honokohau, heading up to the district of Kealakehe, to the beautiful Aina Ho'opulapula, or homestead of Laiopua. This is where I live. My name is Kumuke Ala Ching. I, I'm here in Kona, but before that, I resided in Nanakuli, Oahu. And I moved here about 21 years ago and made this residence uh, my home. Um, I'm really excited and happy to be here this evening to share about Vai. Um, I am a teacher of life, I'm, I'm thinking, um, because there's many, many things. Olalo Hawaii, Hula, Ho'oponopono, Ike Hawaii, all of these things that kind of surrounds um, life in general. So this is who I am. Uh, what we wanted to um, share, of course, the opening chant is the chant that is featured in our, um, in our gallery. And back when I was called and the word vai or water came up, I was like, whoa, okay. So I really, really wanted to hear what everyone had to, to share about water and um, it was sort of being distracted by my little niece running around in her, in her swimming pool and, and sort of trying to keep a conversation going. And it was really, really um, wonderful just to hear all, all the discussions about water and how um, water is exactly about life. And so I kind of shared that, you know, for Hawaii, especially when we look at the word Hawaii. We, we take the word apart and we have ha, and ha is the breath. <clears throat> In the word aloha, alo, alo is face, um, and ha is the breath. To be able to see each other face to face, to be able to be present with each other, to share each other's ike, knowledge, vision, and presence. It's really, really important in this word, aloha. <clears throat> and then ha, then vai, the breath found in the vai, or the water. And the e, the okina e. And when we sort of look at that, in ancient Hawaii, we have a god that was basically unknown or not spoken of. Um, and you can go all the way into Polynesia 
And in Polynesia, they will say that there is this one God that no one would speak of. Well, in Hawaii, this is possibly one of them. Um, his name, or her name, or its name, I, Io, Ia. So we know Io, we know the hawk, the Hawaiian hawk. This is one, Io. Um, Ia, um, this is a format of how we begin to work on something. And then the word I. I ties to this ancient god that is holding in the water. So it's tied to Kane Akavai. And Kane Akavai is the, the god of the water. And this is where it's all tied into the word Hawaii. So when we, we share about this god that is not spoken a lot, our people actually wrote them, wrote the name of this god in our simple word of Hawaii. And then we have Hawaii Pono'i, you know, doing what is right in the, in the face of this god. And again, like I shared, the god is possibly Kaneakawai or Kaneikawai, which is the creator. And the, I guess it could be a fortunate thing, an unfortunate thing, that when the missionaries traveled here in 1820, um, you know, the beautiful thing about this story that I've been really diving into is that <clears throat> it was actually a Hawaiian that had a very devastating life. Um, he lost his parents in a battle. Um, they were killed in front of him. And he was devastated because he had no, no one else. And so he was Hanai. Hanai is to be adopted by his uncle, who was a kahuna at the time. And this story actually takes place here on Hawaii Island in the district of Napopo or Kealakekua. And this young man, his name is, or was or is um, Henry Opukahaia. So when Henry Opukahaia boarded the ship, and he got on this ship about 1800, and he journeyed all the way to New Haven, Connecticut, and he was educated. And so as he was educated, he then influenced the possibility of bringing this word of God which is the Christian faith, over to Hawaii. And so this is what started it all. It started with one of these young Hawaiians traveling over to the East Coast, inspired by the knowledge, um, because he was educated, and he knew how much this education would mean to our people. So the missionaries came in 1820. Um, on the good end, they were able to document document a lot of stories, or at least teach our people to document these histories. And so in this documentation, um, the gods that came out in these missionaries' writing, we have Kane. Kane is the god of the creation. And then we have Lono. Lono, the best to describe Lono is of agriculture, healing, um, and the god of peace. And then the god Ku. And so Ku was a more masculine type of god. And I think the best known one would be uh, King Kamehameha, his god, which is Ku Kailimoku, which means the god that captures or snags all the islands. And so it becomes a very, very significant part in King Kamehameha's journey to conquer the entire islands this Kuka Ilimoku. So, during those times we had Ku, Kane, and Lono. And then, as our people started to document more and more stories, it was actually during Samuel Kamakau, a uh, native Hawaiian who documented stories along with David Malo. David Malo, born and raised in the Keho district in Kona. Um, he moved over to Maui uh, went to the seminary of Lahaina Luna, and it was at that point he then learned how to document many of the stories and was fortunately enough to get it printed. So we're looking at about 1840, 1848, that Hawaii 
was the most literate nation in the world, uh, being that they translated uh, the Bible from Hebrew into Hawaiian. They documented many of our uh, legends, our stories, into large volumes of books. And at that time, King Kamehameha III, Kau Ikeoli, encouraged the people to, to read and to write and to be literate in Hawaiian and in English. Well, at this time, David Kamakau, uh, David Malo, and Samuel Kamakau, in their writings, they now add the fourth god. And the fourth god is Kanaloa. So we have Kane, the god of fresh water, Kanaloa, the god of salt water, then Lono, the god of peace, and then Ku, the god of masculinity or war. Um, or that kind of strength. So we have these four gods <clears throat> that was documented. And here in the chant that I wrote, um, talking about that, we honor, at the time the chant was written, it was written around um, in November. And November was a time of Makahiki. And the Makahiki season is basically the season for Lono. Lono Ika Makahiki. And so on Hawaii, we know that it's a little different here in Hawaii, <clears throat> um, in, especially in Kona, we have a lot of visitations from Lono now. Now is April, May, and June. And this visitation is a lot of rain. In Kona, we receive a lot of rain during these months. But the Makahiki is actually starting in November. And at the arrival of the Pleiades, Makali'i, um, this is when they know that Lono is now here on the land. And so in the chant, it talks about Lono, the clouds, and how these clouds are so gray that it drops all the rain. And so as it drops all the rain, and it drops into the Punavai, the Punavai of Kane, and so now we recognize the rain of Lono, and then the waters of Kane. And then here in Kona, we have aquifers, and it goes underground all the way into our sea. And so all this water flows directly into our ocean, which is known that Kona had the best deep sea fishing just on the shoreline. In old days, our kupuna would just go with a hammer and just go to the coastline, see the fish, hammer the fish, and you got a huge fish just off the shoreline. But because of what's happening in our land, many development, the warm water is now all along the coastline. So now when we talk about deep sea fishing, and we're talking about the impact of fresh water, now we have to go further out for deep sea, fishing, deep sea fishing because of the mixture of the cold and the salt water. Well, that's Kanaloa. And so when the sun beats up on the ocean, then that gas from the ocean turns into um, gases, which fills our beautiful clouds. And that motion of just going straight up from the ocean, this is the god Ku. So in the chant, it recognizes that and Today we know it as the water cycle, uh, but it helped me to teach in the Hawaiian Immersion School on how to relate this water cycle that we teach in science and how it's related to the gods, the four gods that are very significant, Lono, Kane, Kanaloa, and then Ku. Yeah, so this is the chant that was written and it was written just for uh, Oli Hi'uvai. Uh, Hi'uvai is to go into the ocean, submerge yourself, just like a cleansing. And it was to honor that water cycle. And you go in and you just submerge yourself. And then when you stand up, you, you're standing almost purified. And then you walk back out. So when it says Ho'iola, you walk back out because now the cycle continues again. 
Now, inspired by my mentor, his name is Lehua um, Kawai Kapuokalani Hewitt, he wrote chants and placed his beautiful name in it. Of course, he didn't put it there because he just made it because Kawai, the waters, Kapu, sacred, Okalani of the heavens, which is what we talk about is that the waters are these sacred spots of the heaven. This is what is so rich about the Vai of Hawaii. Well, being that my name is Ke'ala, I put it in the, in the battle. The last verse, it talks about how our journey, our journey is what's so, so important and how we recognize the, the water sources and where they begin and where they end and how they continue. So it's really exciting that when I was sharing with Mina and um, Miho and Jack, I said, oh, I have a, I have a chant. Um, it's specifically for water. And they said, really? Kumi cool. goes, yes. So I sent them the chant, and this is the chant that I sent. And it's really, really nice to have it displayed and to be able to share these stories um, about the water and how they relate it. So in history, um, it was written that in the beginning, Kane and Kanaloa actually journeyed on, one of the books of course said that they were walking on the water. And as they were walking, why? Because they are of the water. Yeah, Kane, fresh water, Kanaloa, salt water. And they were looking for a place. And in fact, they journeyed through the islands. And as they journeyed through the islands, they had a digging stick. And as they dug the stick, the waters would come out. So this is where they would normally find the area or the Kaya Ulu, the community of where the community would sort of build up because of the water source in these areas. Well, traveling to and for, we would recognize in Hawaiian tradition, there are certain plants that indicates that there is water. So when our people walk from Ka'u heading up to North Kona, the main focus was the kukui nut tree. The kukui nut tree uh, as large as the leaf is, you know that the root is very close to water. Then we know when the, the leaf is really, really small, there's not that much water. All it is is just top water runoff. So I've been checking it out, looking to see if it's really true. And it's, it's amazing that the kukui nut needs a lot of water to, to grow. So that's a nice indication. The other indication for those of us that's on the makai side, that's the seaward side, is this nice floating plant. And it floats and it travels because it's not native to Hawaii. And this is the coconut tree. The coconut tree, that root would find the water source. And so, Back in the days when I was running around at my grandmother's house, they had all the cesspools, and it was told never to put a coconut tree near it because the coconut roots would go and fill that entire cesspool, which then would fill everything up, and then you would have to change. Yeah, so now we have septic tanks. So, <laughs> but. To, to be able to see that there's no coconut trees near this cesspool or there was no um, coconut trees planted near the water source, these are really, really important. Now, although the coconut is not native, our people, when they travel, uh, they would travel and they would find a kupuna, an elder. And the... Uh, Kupuna would say, Hui, ai ihe kawaiya kane. So the answer would be, ai kawaiya kane iluna. So in a riddle, it, he would say, where's the waters of kane? And so the kupuna would say, up, 
And they said, up? Where? Say, well, Ayakavaya Kane Kaniu. So he said that the water is found in the coconut. So if we were to take the coconut, crack it open, the most nutritious water comes from the, the coconut. So Aya Ilaila Kavaya Kane. Then the kupuna said, Yeah, there is water. The water is in the coconut. Now, thinking about that, you know, and traveling here and there, speaking, I kane. So a chant was written, and the chant is very similar to the chant that is uh, presented. And the chant says, Hewi, hewi aku oi, ai kane. And this is an inquiry. I'm inquiring to find where the waters of Kane. And so, <clears throat> not word for word of this chant, but they would say, Aya yuka, ikeau uli uli, ikeau pano pano, aya ilaila kavayakane. So they said, in the, in the clouds, in the dark clouds, in the blue clouds, there the waters of Kane. As I shared with you, that would be the waters of Lono, in the clouds. And then they would say, Ewi aku ya oe, aya ihe kavaya kane. I'm inquiring, where are the waters of Kane? Then they would say, Aihi kina akala puka mai iha e ha e. Ah, piya e la, ah, moe akula i komohana. Aya i leila kavaya kane. So they said, I have a request. Where is the waters of Kane? Said, the waters of Kane is in the east side. As the sun climbs up to the highest peak and the sun sets on Komohana, on the west side, there, the waters of Kane. So continuous. Say, I have a request. Where are the waters of Kane? Then in the chant it says, in the uplands, on the mountain, and on the ridges, I Ilaila Kavayakana, there the waters of Kane. So they continue, I hear Kavayakane, e we akanawyawe, I hear Kavayakane. They say, Ayaki Kahavai. Yeah, Ayaki Kahavai, Ike Kai Allah, I Ilaila Kavayakane. So my request again, where are the waters of Kane? So the waters of Kane is in the streams, the streams that flow from the mountain all the way to the sea. There, the waters of Kane. And they say, Ewi yak anau ya oi, ai i hekava ya kane. Aya i ke kua hivi, ke ku paa o ke kanaka. Aya i laila kava ya kane. Much like the tall, majestic mountains, it is within every individual. There, the waters of Kane. Ah, Aya i laila kava ya kane. There is the waters of Kane. So we recognize the waters in everything that's surrounding us, from the rising of the sun, the setting of the sun, to the beautiful clouds, the mountain, into the stream, and in every one of us, there's the waters of Kane. And so when we talk about that, um, we then tie into he manakavai, he vai kamana. And when we look at that, we're looking at the water. And many times, the water has that mana. What type of mana? That essence. And that essence is what the intentions that we give in to the water. Yeah? So very similar to the gathering of the waters of all the different ahupua'a that is poured in this beautiful bowl. Yeah? The intentions is you bring the water and you share where the water is from. Because the Wailua, the Wailua is that two waters. And that two waters is you, the one that carries the water, and spiritually, your ancestors are carrying the waters as well. And so when you pour it in, you're pouring the waters from where you reside. And in the heavens, they're pouring the same water. And so this is that Wailua, this is that connection of spirit. 
So every January, we have a um, community gathering out at Alula. This is by Honokoha Harbor. Alula is also called Alaula. Alaula is a pathway that is red. And it comes because when the water would fill up all the alkaline ponds that surrounds the salt water has a lot of these red shrimps. They call them opaiula. And when the salt water would fill these ponds up, from there they would sink and come out. And on the, the skin of the shoreline, you can see this red path of all red shrimps in this beach area. And that is called alula. It's so amazing that this story comes from this beautiful beach that no one chooses to use the name of that beach. But we have now the opportunity to make sure that we all remember the story and it's called Alaula or Alula and not the name that they're using. It's the wrong name, especially when the name is in English. It's wrong. So we bring back the ike, the knowledge of where we are. And this is Hawaii. And uh, if you do not know how to say the name, then learn. Learn how to say Alaula or Alula. And that's the name of this beautiful beach where we have lots of dogs defecating all over these sacred sites. But, you know, we have to use this wailua to see how we can educate people. This is the most important thing. Educate that, you know, you're defecating all on my kupuna. Um, you wouldn't want that for your kupuna. But we come from a society, you know, they probably come from a society that they have no connection to kupuna, to elders. So, you know, we can allow that, you know, but you're here in Hawaii, you should learn how important it is to not be so ignorant on the beautiful lands of Hawaii. And so when we bring our water, we bring our water because we honor the Ahupua'a or the land district that you live and you honor that spirit of that land district. And you pour it in this beautiful bowl, reciting the beautiful name of your Ahupua'a. And it really brings that connection to the elders, to the spirit, and it brings it alive. And that's what's so, so important about he vaikamana, he manakavai. That once we are able to give that mana, give that essence to that vai, to that water, to that knowledge, and once we give that, then it returns. It returns so that we we are able to be strength. We gain that strength, that mana of that vai. Because that vai is also us. We, we are that vai. You know, like I said, 75%. Um, 75% about our water, our body is water base. So this is that water that we're talking about. Now the best thing I could probably share about wailua um, wai lua would be two. Wai is water, lua is two. So two water sources. So as we started, we had kane. Kane is of the fresh water. And then we have kanaloa. Kanaloa is of the salt water. So we have this two wai lua. Wai lua, two water sources. Then I was sharing with Mina that it, we could probably even look at our heart and how our heart uh, pumps all this blood out into all our body parts with the oxygen. And then our body returns that water back into our heart. So in that whole physiological movement, you got one vai coming out and another vai going back in to the heart. In, in, the, in one of the verses, it says punavai. Yeah, punavai. Punavai is that water source. Yeah, and it's very similar to 
are pu'uvai. Pu'uvai, pu'uvai is the heart, yeah? But the shape of the heart is called haka. That's the shape. But pu'uvai, how could they even come up with pu'uvai? What I thought is when they started to study the inside of the body, they actually took the heart and placed the heart on the table and when they did, it had a pu'u. It had a hill. So they called it pu'u and where the waters would flow in and out. So they called it pu'u vai. So pu'u vai is actually the heart. The, the hill that flows the different waters. The vailua of the waters. Mahalo. I think, you know, one of the, the greatest thing as, you know, artists is that we, we connect the best way we possibly can. You know, and many of us are not Hawaiian. Many of us moved here uh, <clears throat> that have no connection. And, and I share this because when I first came to Hawaii Island, I hid under the rocks. <laughs> And the reason why I hid under the rocks is because I, I came from another island. And when you come from an, another island, you do your best to honor the stories that is here. And the wonderful thing that before I left, I researched my hometown. And my hometown is called Nanakuli. And if you were to look at that word Nanakuli, Nanakuli is actually to look deaf or to look below your knee. You know, because Kuli is your knee. So you would Nanakuli, you would look below your knee. And so many stories came out about how the Ali'i, would travel from the Everplains. And the Everplains is, now we know that as Kapole. And from the Everplains, they would travel through Nanakuli to get to Waianae. And Waianae is where the water is. So they said that when the Ali'i would travel through Nanakuli, the people of Nanakuli would look deaf, or they would look below their knees, because they had no water. That's the story that they told. But I wasn't going for that story. I was asking Kupuna elders, they said, is it really true? Yes, that's the story we were taught in our elementary. And I was like, nah, I don't think so. You know, so before I left Nanakuli, I did my own research. And the wonderful thing is, right up in the the tip of the valley of Nanakuli, and the valley is, is all homestead. Within the whole different valley, everything between it is all homestead. Hawaiians lived in that whole valley. And so when I researched, the top of that mountain was called Mauna Kapu. Mauna Kapu, that's a sacred mountain. And I was like, wow, that's amazing to be from a place that's called the Sacred Mountain. Then south of that Sacred Mountain, in another valley, was a water source. And that water source fed the valley of Nanakuli. So today, that water source goes all the way to the beach of Nanakuli, and the people now call it Stink Pond. The Stink Pond that never goes dry. And it stinks because nobody goes and cleans it. But it's a, it's a flourishing water source that's coming from this mountain. Because on the driest, driest month, that place still has water. So we had water. So why would the people of Nanakuli look deaf or look below their knees? We had water. Say, so, well, they didn't have food. Well, all on the terrace, just below that water source, we planted a lot of taro, a lot of uala, 
sweet potato, kalo, um, and squash. Yeah? All planted. There were terraces planted there. So we had food. So I was thinking, hmm, we had food, we had water, and as Hawaiians, we would give our shirt to anybody passing by. Yeah, here, you need it, go. So I was like, no, Nanakuli couldn't be this. And it was all about the water because the water was not um, flourishing in Nanakuli. But it was. It was just really trickling. It wasn't as fast as white anai. You know, white, white is water of white anai, and it flows in white anai. So I came up with this beautiful story, and I'm going to go to my grave with it. And that is, the people of Nanakuli are the gatekeepers of this sacred mountain. No one knows why that mountain is called Mauna Kapu, but there's a sacred mountain in Nanakuli. And I am much prouder to be from Nanakuli because I am one of those gatekeepers of this sacred mountain that's called Nanakuli. And then I would say, I think about 11 years ago, uh, we had a family reunion. All my family in Nanakuli, Waianai, they all gathered there at Nanakuli Beach. So I told my sister, she was one of the organizers, I said, find me a school bus. I'm going to take whoever wants to go on a tour of the whole coast of Waianai. So all my older cousins said, yeah, go send all the young kids with him. So they sent all the young kids with him, with me. And I took them throughout this whole coastline, telling them all the stories of Waianai Coast. Then we got to Nanakuli. And I said, you know the story about Maui? They said, yeah, Maui comes from Maui. He goes, no. <laughs> Maui comes from Nanakuli. They said, what? He goes, yes. He was born right in here as I was passing. Uleava, this is where he was born. He then captured the sun up there at Mauna Kapu. He snagged the sun and he dragged it all the way to the hill that's called Hele Ekala, going of the sun. But today we call it Haleakala. In Nanakuli, there's Haleakala, but it's Hele Ekala. And Maui snagged the sun there in Nanakuli. And all the children was like, what? Maui is from Nanakuli? He goes, absolutely. Maui is from Nanakuli. So bringing pride back to this place, my home place, Nanakuli, really talking about the water. The water that was quote unquote sparse in Nanakuli, but we actually had lots of water in Nanakuli. But to be able to know that we're the gatekeepers of this sacred mountain is really, really important. So when I traveled to Hawaii Island, under the rock, didn't want to go out, didn't want to talk to no one, because, you know, I had to kind of ask for forgiveness coming from Oahu Island, seek forgiveness for all the elders in this beautiful place of Hawaii. Knowing that my ancestors come from this place, but they moved to Oahu. But still, I'm removed, and now I'm back. And so, waited about a year, a year and a half, and then I went to my dear friend's party, and I saw every Hawaiian that I could ever look in for in Kona. They were all at this party. And I said, wow, look, all the Hawaiians are here. And so they said, hey, Kumu, can you come and sing us a song? He goes, me? Me sing a song? I can't sing a song. I only know how to sing preschool songs. Come on, get up here. So I sang Hokey Pokey in Hawaiian. And when I sang Hokey Pokey, I was then known as the Hokey Pokey guy. In Kona, all the elders said, oh, you're the Hokey Pokey guy. So slowly, slowly started to get out into this beautiful community. And back then, my desire was to write 
chants, specifically of the North Kona region and then in the, the South Kona region. But my, my idea was to locate all these water sources along the coastline and find every name and the water source leading all the way up to Kahevai, which is another place of water. This water is down by Honomalino. So I'm still researching all the way down, but it's fascinating to know that the water exists here along the coastline of Kona, although it may seem very dry, uh, but the water is so, so important. So that was my, my dream back then. And now it's come to reality to be able to document many of these stories, um, names of Kona, which is really, really important. And so, you know, the beautiful thing now is that now they have, you know, imparted many of their stories onto me. And so I'm really happy to be able to, once again, be humble enough to, you know, share as much as we can to make sure that these words and these names are um, shared often. And this is such a, a blessing to be able to to be given that gift, you know, starting from under the stones and now here Kumu, you know, here you are. And you know, it's, it's truly a blessing to be able to hold that vai, and that vai is that knowledge, you know, and, and we know that when we use the word vai vai, vai vai, when you, you look at Tutu Pukui, Mary Kavena Pukui, the Hawaiian dictionary, vai vai means rich, yeah, so, Rich is not material rich, but rich meaning very knowledgeable. And so in order to be vai vai, you have to find the vai, which is the knowledge. <laughs> you find the knowledge, and then you continue to build in the knowledge, then you're vai vai, you know. So it's really, really, um, it's awesome to be able to, you know, hold on to this vai and knowing that, you know, vai at some times will be stagnated. And then all it needs is a, another jolt and then it moves. And so it's, it's really awesome to be able to, you know, at one point I'm like, okay, all the elders are dying. So I need to try and figure out how am I to help that? So it's like another jolt, move you know, so that the stagnation of the water doesn't stay there and it dies. So move to the next and, you know, speak with them. And, you know, the kupuna, the Hawaiian elders, they won't just share freely. You have to take some time, you know, take some food, <laughs> go out and dig some weeds, you know, and give back, you know, and... Yes, they will accept you and, you know, bring you in. And, but you have to be able to give back. And this is something very, very important to be able to share and give back. And to be able to hold on to that knowledge so that the right time, the right place, the knowledge will be shared, and which is really, really nice. Um, and it, it's been a blessing. It's, it's been such a beautiful confirmation from many of the elders who, you know, and, and, and this time it's, it's really difficult because, you know, we need the elder to, to stand in their positions, you know, and many of them have said, no, 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 you're cool, you go, you go stand over there. And it's like, no, we don't want that tradition to be lost, that the elders are the ones that are first, they are the knowledgeable ones. And then we, the younger ones, we're there to support them. And then that's where we need them to know that through my journey of 21 years, I was here to support them. And whenever they needed um, help, I was there to, you know, make sure that they're there in front and help them. Because, you know, that is what I want the children to see. That is not Kumu stepping in front of the elders it's Kumu helping the elders 
and helping them to be strong in their position. And this is where it's really, really important. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's really understanding that movement of the water and how we need to navigate that knowledge and how we can begin to train the young ones to see that we need to be very observant. You know, and in observation, we are able to see how the elders are moving, how the elders are you know, speaking. Um, when they speak, they're so genuine, they're just so sweet. And to the point, I'm, I just tell them, you know, we should have, I think it was about 12 years ago, I said, we should have a university class that says Kupuna 101. <laughs> and Kupuna 101 is, how do we young people understand Kupuna? And I would, I would just share this with my class and say, you know, because sometimes, you know, Kupuna, they stay over there, they're talking, you know, and then... <laughs> and then, you know what, we came back and then... <laughs> you know, it, it's that whole essence of that. They can come back from where they spoke, they left off, they come back right there and we're like, wow, that's amazing, you know? But it's that, it's that simple knowledge that they, they hold and that how they, they can move that, that flow of energy from one to another. And that is what I believe we're missing. We're missing how, how to move that, that way, that knowledge from one point to the next. And knowing, I mean, I, I was so funny. I, we, we did um, my last, I think it was my last, uh, six months of my bachelor's degree at Manoa and we did a round the island tour with my cohort and just so happened we had to um, conduct a ho'oponopono session and the beautiful thing is I had an elder from Ni'ihau um, her, her name is Auntie Lolena Nicholas and she sat in the, in the group and I was the mediator mediating this ho ho oponopono, making sure the knowledge, this vai was flowing with this vai and flowing with this whole group, that the vai was all in its right flow. That was the focus. But I look at the elder and I said, Tutu, he mana o kao? And she said, I. So I asked her if she had a thought. And she said, yes. And so she started to speak and speak and there was this long pause. She didn't fall asleep, but there was this long pause. And so one of the, the, um, the participants um, that was having the problem, the difficulty, she started to speak and I just put my hand on her and I said, no, she's not done. And so Tutu just looked at me and she, she continued. And as she continued, she continued in a prayer. She started to pull it for everybody. And so she, she then closed it out. And then I said, now she's done. You know, and this is, this is what's missing, that we think that we have to go fast, 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 fast. But our elders are not fast, 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 fast. Our elders are at the moment, they're, they're funneling all this ike, all this water, all this vai, so that they are able to impart that. And that's what's missing now. You know, and this is why in my middle school, I'm trying to give them that observation. Sit down, shut up, and open your mind. And that's basically in a very nice, nice, gentle way how kupuna are doing it. They're sitting down, they're not saying nothing, and they're opening up their mind. Because what they're doing is they're trying to include everyone in the room. And, and what I'm doing at my middle school is helping them to see that. That you, you do not have to aggressively attack in your discussion. You need to step back, check it out. And if it's not for you, get out. <laughs> if it's for you, then you engage. If it's not, get out. And so... 
my students are learning it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> to the point they look at me and go, Hi, Kumukiala. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the water is just so fascinating to me. And you know what was so fascinating as well? Is that I'm a fire horse. <laughs> and I'm like, how can a fire horse be really tied to the water? But I love the water. And I think everything has that source. You know, that source. Talking about the fire, you know, we have the Luapele. The Luapele, the volcano, that fire is also vai. It's that water source that's in this Luapele, in the lava that flows. And so it is still a liquid form, and that liquid form is the water. So this is why when Pele started to just go dormant for a while, then the green lake started to appear in Kilauea. Then they were like, whoa, are we going to have a lake now? Well, she said, no way, boom, <laughs> burned it out, right? So um, it's, it, it's really, really nice to be able to, to share and um, speak about the water.